Hi. Hi, Robin. How can you hear you? me? Yes, I can. Oh, good. It's so Hello. good to see you. It's so good to see you, too. Um, welcome. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for your patience while we kick this off. I'm Ben Reinhardt, the style director at Domino Magazine. And um, welcome. I'm so excited to be talking about some of my favorite topics today, color and mood boards. There's nothing with, better. There's nothing better. Nope. With the very talented Robin Verrier. Robin is here below joining today. She is a prop stylist, a photographer, and the founder of Very Robin and Company based in Charlottesville, Virginia. I'm so thrilled to have you. Robin works with tastemakers and brands such as Le Creuset and bring, helps to bring their stories to life using beautiful objects, flowers, and their products. And Robin, I know you recently partnered with Le Creuset to celebrate the launch of Agave, their latest color introduction, a rich blue and green jewel tone, and the brand's first color to blend shades from two different color families. So welcome, Robin. Thank you for having me. What an awesome intro. I'm so excited that we're doing this. Of course. Well, so one of the things I love about Le Creuset as a brand is that they really do celebrate color. Mm -hmm. So this sounds like, it sounds like such a perfect pairing for you. Yeah, I, so like you said, I help brands advertise in a really fun way. And like, as a person who loves color, it's so great to work with brands who love color. You know, it just makes the process so much more fun. Um, so when Light Crusade approached me and we've done a few different color launches together um, to help create the campaign for their new agave color, I was so excited because who doesn't love a good blue, which this is, it's a beautiful blue green. Um, and it was just so much fun. Uh, we really had a good time with this one. It really is a stunning color. And um, I'm going to pull up um, mm -hmm. an image here. Um, one second. Um, but while I do that, what, how did you first get into creating mood boards? That's a really good question. And I get asked that a lot. So I started this business almost five years ago, which is so crazy. Um, but I would like a lot of creative professionals create mood boards to help with like a planning process, you know, like if I'm doing a project or something, um, mood boards are a really great way to kind of get all of your thoughts in one place, you know, like everything in front of you, no matter what it is that you're doing. And so I was actually creating a mood board, a working mood board for a stationary company that I was working with. Mm -hmm. And um, I was, you know, I, it was for spring and I got all of the beautiful spring um, stationary out. And I was like, what are the cool props that I can pull to kind of bring this line to life helped tell this new story in a really fun way. And so I did this mood board uh, and I was like, well, maybe I should share this to my Instagram. This is years ago. I, I was like, I don't know if people will care or if they'll like it, but I did. And so I shared um, my mood board to Insta and people loved it. And I kind of started falling in love with the process of mood board creating. And it kind of became like, my way of uh, telling my story and of expressing myself. So it really started five years ago when I was creating a mood board just for a client for a project. And I guess the rest is history, but that's well, really how it started. Yeah. Well, and, and you are obviously you're surrounded by your inspiration. I can see that mm -hmm. now. Um, mm -hmm. we're in the studio. Um, yep. We, we often, I'm at the Domino office and we yeah. often, put up um, our working issues as, as we're developing them here. So I, I totally get mm -hmm. how important it is to kind of keep those items sort of around you and mm -hmm. in, you know, in proximity to where you're working. So I was curious to hear from you about what, like how do you set goals around creating mood boards? And in your opinion, like what makes it successful for those of, um, our readers who are, are tuning in, how can they create a successful mood board for one of their own projects? Yeah, that's a great idea. So 
Um, you know, we can do inspirational mood boards just for fun or a mood board to help plan for a project. I think mood boards all have different missions. Do you know what I mean? Like they can be for different things. So I think for a mood board to be successful just for fun is to have fun doing it. That's kind of the point. Um, I always think that a good place to start, and this is what I do, is to pick a single color or a single theme. And who doesn't love a theme? Uh, to kind of start there and kind of build off of that. And then you can kind of, it makes it easier when you're getting props too, because like, if you're like, I'm just going to work in one color, color family and all blue, then it makes your job easier when you're getting things together. Um, but if it's for a project, I think it just needs to help you kind of get the job done. You know, when you, you have like a million little bits and pieces and things in your brain and you can put them all in front of you at one time and see everything it, kind of makes everything gel and do my colors work? Do my aesthetics work? It's just a great way um, to kind of plan for something. So it just depends on what the end result you want is either for fun or for a project. Um, but they're so helpful, I think, you know? Absolutely. I'm going to pull up, this is um, a clip from one of the mood boards that you had worked on for the Le Creuset project. And yep. I love that you're thinking about colors in terms of like different tones. So mm -hmm. how do you bring in like, you know, three dimensional objects or other things mm -hmm. aside? Or what else do you kind of, you know, um, like to include aside from like magazine tears mm -hmm. and printed, printed pieces? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, kind of like what I was saying earlier, I like to play like on a color story. So this mood board that you're showing in particular, um, is really kind of a perfect mixture of blue and green, which is just like uh, Le Creuset's agave color that we just launched, which is blue and green. So I kind of wanted to have a mood board that represents fun and nature and excitement. And so I kind of sourced a lot of different things. And that's usually what I use in my mood boards anyway. It's just lots of different bits and pieces to kind of I'll tell one really cool story. So um, I love a physical mood board over a digital one just for me personally, because I can really use like anything like you can see here in my studio. I just have lots of just different items. Um, so I think it just depends. But I do love playing with the color story kind of like the one you just showed was really fun with blue and green. And um, yeah, I love that you bring in elements from nature and that you're mm -hmm. looking outside of just like, I think we all have screen fatigue and zoom fatigue so it's it's refreshing yep. to me that you're seeking um sources of inspiration from nature and other places which leads me to wonder you know during the, these times where are you finding inspiration for your creative projects um mm -hmm. are any unconventional places or anything anywhere that you maybe might not have expected to find inspiration mm -hmm. for for an upcoming project or something that you're working on now? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. And I actually get asked that one a lot. Um, and I, I think my answer is always going to be nature just because it's kind of like a, an immersive experience. Like when you go outside or if you're at the beach, it's a full sensory experience, you know? Like if you're at the beach, you can hear the ocean and you can feel the wind and like we'll stand on your toes. And it's really uh, kind of a sensory um, moment that you don't really get when you're inside or if you're at your computer, do you know what I mean? So when I'm able to kind of be out in nature and surround myself with what, whatever's going on there, um, it kind of sparks these other creative ideas. And um, yeah, and I, and I love nature yeah. so much that I really do love to include it in a lot of my work. So I use shells and plants and pressed ferns and whatever I can get my hands on. <laughs> yeah. I, love, I, I love that. And and I love that you're sort of analyzing what's out there and kind of grouping those things into different families. Um, mm -hmm. And one thing that, you know, I've always loved about the brand uh, Le Creuset is that they always really stood behind color and mm -hmm. Domino as a brand really loves to celebrate color as well. Yeah. Our team is always on the hunt for what's new and what's next mm -hmm. in terms of trending colors, um, mm -hmm. palettes. So I'm curious to hear from you just a little bit about how, what it was like to sort of apply a new color that's mm -hmm. sort of launching the market with actual product like mm -hmm. Dutch ovens, skillets mm -hmm. and casseroles and sort of incorporate 
that type of retail product into um, the work that you create? Yeah, that's a great question. And kind of the beauty about what I do is that I can work with so many different types of product, you know, to bring them to life. And so working with like cookware and pots and pans was a new kind of uh, medium, if you will. And I, and I loved it. And the thing that made it fun is because Lake Crusade really leans into color and personality and they really, it's just fun. You know, it's something that you want to be a part of and to have in your life. So um, the really cool thing about these color launches is that these colors over the years that we've done, um, just have so much personality. And I think they kind of um, have so many inspirations behind them. Like, for example, the Agave Blue that just launched, to me, is kind of like when you're walking out on the dune and you're looking out at the beach in front of you and it's just that feeling, you know, of the, the wind on your face. And it's kind of the feeling that that blue gives you. I feel like color is so powerful and it can really move you. And um, I think like Kirstay really understands that and they are able to bring these feelings into your life with these pieces um, that you can have in your kitchen and, and your in your world. And so it was really cool to do these color launches because um, I could kind of bring out all the inspirations that are behind these colors. Like what does this color make you feel and what does it evoke for you? So it was kind of fun to play off of those feelings in the mood board to kind of give the color a little bit of narrative, you know, to tell the story and what inspired it and um, kind of mm -hmm. where it takes you. Do you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. I'm going to pull up um, one of my favorite color stories that you produced, which was, which is this um, lemony yellow color. And so I'd love to hear from you, like now that you've collaborated with this brand, this mm -hmm. iconic brand, um, how do you, how would you recommend our audience um, integrate some of these pieces into their own kitchens? Would you say like, go bold, like I love a, like this bright yellow kind of mm -hmm. trending marigold color, or are you kind of like, would you sort of advise like going with sort of, sort of more of a neutral color? I'm just mm -hmm. curious what you, what you think. So that's a great question. And the reason that this is like fun and like Chrissy makes it fun is because they have such a wide, very, excuse me, um, array of options, color options. Yeah. You can really choose whatever you want and for whatever mood you, you want or whatever, you know, color your kitchen is. Um, so for nectar, that beautiful golden yellow you just showed, I really wanted it to be powerful. And so I used a lot of the same tone just because we are launching a new color. I want it to be all about that color and that mood board particularly. And um, that warm nectar color is kind of like warm and homey, but it's also sophisticated. And it kind of like plays well with others, if you will. It can be matched with a lot of other colors, which is really cool. And mm -hmm. something that Le Creuset has done with some of their new jewel tones is they made it so that they will work with a lot of other colors, um, which is so neat. Yeah. So let's see. If I had to, if I had to pick, though, this is hard because. I yeah, know, let's, you... let's get down to it. Yeah, what <laughs> um, I love the nectar color. I think it's gorgeous. I also yeah. am very much partial to flame, which is their oh, yeah. color. But what, yeah, what, um, what are you sort of drawn to for your own for your own space? So it's funny you ask because I was married almost seven years ago in May. And on our wedding, our wedding registry, I had flame as one of the things that I had to have. And this is way before I worked with Lake Say. Yes. I, so truly, truly, that the orange, like classic flame color is a favorite. And I think it's so like sophisticated and beautiful and classic all in one, which is so neat because it's orange. And um, so I love the orange, but I kind of like to incorporate colors that you normally don't see together. So I think it's cool to pair um, the flame with the new uh, agave, which is the beautiful blue green, or the new artichoke, which is that really deep leafy green. Mm. And it's kind of cool to play on opposites, you know, how, how you have like orange and blue or orange and red. Yeah, yep. So, yeah. I mean, but I also, to be honest, I also love having all one color story. You know what I mean? It's kind of refreshing to see everything in the same color. 
Um, I don't know. I guess the answer is I can't choose. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I hear you. It kind of depends on your style, your own personal style. Mm -hmm. And I, I find them super helpful to have on shoots. We always, I'm always packing a, a white Dutch oven in yep. my bag just to have because they're always, they're so versatile and they look great in photographs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I totally hear you. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, and so it was so great to sort of connect and hear about your collaboration with the brand and to chat a little bit about um, your creative process. Thank you. This is so fun. I've loved chatting with you guys. You guys are the best. So oh this is, God. you're in your office. I'm trying to look at what's behind you. Thank you. Yeah, our office. And this is our, our, one of our past issues that was recently published. So cool. we're, we're doing some spring cleaning. And um, Oh, Awesome. I hope that you are able to uh, relax this weekend. And it was so good to see you. Yeah, you too, guys. Thanks for joining us. This was so much fun. Of course. Thanks, Robin. It was great to connect. And thank you, um, ben. I look forward to being in touch. Yep, same. Bye, you guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. See ya. Bye.